Hello, I'm Atu Jamir and you're watching Hornbill TV. Ballet is one of the most popular dance forms and even in India, it is gradually making its presence felt in a country where dance forms like Bharatanatyam and Kathakali is most popular or is known for. And in fact, we can see its influence in youngsters who are now learning ballet. And one youngster as such is Sindhup Sangla, who is with us today. And she's from Nagaland and she has a passion for ballet. She's passionate about ballet. And we could also say that she could be the first from our state to opt or to want to take a ballet as a profession. And we'll also be joined by her mother today. So thank you so much, Sindhup. And thank you so much, Mom, for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have both of you here. So since the, uh, this is about Sinab and her uh, passion for ballet, this conversation is all going to be about that. For Sinab, I would want to ask you, tell me more about yourself. Uh, where are you studying or which standard are you in? And just things that you like. Okay. Um, my name is Sinab Sala Jamir. I'm a student as of now. And I've just passed my 10th exam from Maple Tree School Dimapur and now I'm preparing to go for full-time ballet in Australia. All right, so ma'am, uh, I would also want to know more about your family as well. So besides, is Sinab the only child or besides Sinab, who else is there? And tell me more about the family. Yeah, uh, Sinab is the youngest sibling amongst two. Okay. Uh, she has a brother who has just graduated from Mumbai and only one of them. <laughs> Alright ma'am, also what about you? Uh, what do you do for a living or how do you spend most of your days? Actually, uh, I am. Uh, my husband is into business okay. and I also help him in business. And as my children are still growing up and studying, I'm also full time into looking for the helping the studies and careers. Yeah. So, Sinab, um, uh, I would like to ask you, since ballet is very much unknown to us, also, I mean, it's, it's very, uh, it's I wouldn't say people in Nagaland are not aware about it, but we are not much aware about it. Let me just say that. So, how did you get into ballet? How was it? Um, Yes, I was first introduced to ballet by my parents at the age of five. And how was it through uh, videos or...? Uh, actually, my uncle from Singapore, uh, he knew a ballet teacher in Dimapur, so he suggested my parents that I should try it out. And did you uh, try it out because you were asked to or did you actually feel like uh, learning ballet? How was it? I didn't really know what ballet was, so mm. it was just trying it out. And after that you started yeah, later liking on, it? Yeah, I started developing interest. So um, you mean you started learning ballet, you, you took classes here, uh, when was that? Oh yes, uh, I first started taking my ballet classes in Hope Center for Excellence in Dimapur under the initiative of Mem Zubeno Muzhu. Uh, in Hope Center I was trained by three teachers, Miss Queen Liu Vasa from Singapore, Dr. Jill Struen from France, and Lena Hin from Germany. So being it a very new thing to you, uh, how was your experience like then? Like, did you uh, really enjoy it then? Um, at first, it was just like uh, uh, going to a dance class and doing some exercises. Later on, I got bored mm -hmm. because, yeah, and then um, at the age of 11, that's when I really started getting interested into this art form. So ma'am, also tell us more about Sinab as a child. We'd also want to know, I mean, she's still growing up now, but as a little child, like she said, she was introduced to ballet when she was five years old, is that what oh. you said? Yes. So tell us more about how she was like, and also as a person, uh, her as a person, how is she, her personality and everything? As a child, she was very quiet, but very particular mm. and very choosy also, but she is very observant. Mm. That is how, like, she knows what is going on around. 
And when she started learning, as she said, five years old, whenever she come back from ballet school, she will run the whole house mm -hmm. and make me run after her. <laughs> and then she will make me dance also, like that. We enjoyed also, and this is how she grew up with ballet. Also, I would want to know, uh, was there any uh, chances or any uh, places where you have performed here, maybe schools or any functions? Have you ever performed? Uh, yes, I've performed in school functions. Yeah, just school functions. Yeah, throughout, I think in school, she got the best yeah. performance in school, in ballet school, in Hop Center for Excellence, yeah. And also what about, uh, she's, she, uh, you said she studied in uh, Maple Tree, so in functions and all, did you get to perform as well? Yes, I got to perform in uh, annual functions. And what was the response like? Because I think um, ballet is a dance form that we hardly get to see children also performing and even adults performing. So how was your, how was the reaction from your friends and family? Did you get all the love and appreciation for that performance or how was it? Um, yeah, uh, they don't really know about ballet, so it was interesting for them. And yeah, they told me I did well. <laughs> and do they even, uh, are they, uh, do they come to you asking questions about ballet also, about can you dance from Gantage, Kiki and questions can you Uh, yeah, yes, they did. What type of dance it is and uh, why do I do it mm. and questions like that. And also, ma'am, um, I would also want to know more about uh, how she was introduced to ballet. She said that she was introduced to ballet from the uncle. So I would want to know more about that story from you, ma'am. Yeah, actually, it's a very long story. So my brother-in-law, when she came back from uh, Singapore, because as you know, na, Singapore, so manu time breath ballet kureda. So it was nothing new for them. And he said, there is one lady who is teaching ballet, so you please look around and then... So we, initially it was a dream, it was a child's dream, mm -hmm. and then later on it becomes like a, her patient. teacher. we start looking for a teacher, mm -hmm. so we found, but again, uh, we should dig that by today. Infrastructure, hobby, uh, professional teachers, and then studio problem, all this thing come up now. So we nearly give up because to acquire a proper dress and then accessories also now, we have to get it from outside, which is not easy. So initially we were excited, but slowly, slowly now, almost give up. Yeah. Right. Also, ma'am, as you mentioned, uh, you you were looking for a teacher. You, you you're talking about here in uh, Dimapur, right? Yes, so yes. where did you find the teacher? Was there even a ballet teacher then? Or yeah, she she came from. Uh, she married to a Naga. Okay. Uh, she is from Singapore. Mm -hmm. So we got a, uh, her address, and she is uh, teaching in Hop Center. So we got it, the address, and we started classes from her right. with her. Uh, Sinab, I'd want to ask you, uh, what is it about ballet that interests you the most? Well, um, I just love the overall beauty of ballet, from its costumes to its storytelling, its grace, and it's just a very beautiful dance form. Um, also, was it uh, was uh, like you said, uh, you were, I mean, you started learning ballet from when, since you were five years old. Before that, also, were you uh, were you ever aware about ballet and since through cartoons or uh, any other movies were you ever aware of that made no uh, yes through watching um, Barbie movies like the Nutcracker mm. the 12 dancing princesses watching them really mesmerized me and watching those did you ever uh, the amount of efforts you're putting the amount of energy you put into it and time did, did you, uh, watching those did you ever think it would be that uh, difficult also well, I didn't know it would be... <laughs> Initially, it was just a dream, so... <laughs> it, was just, it was just a... Yeah. You didn't know about yeah, the... Yeah. 
So mammals, uh, even you, I'm pretty aware, uh, I'm pretty sure that you, since your daughter was uh, now into ballet, you also did a lot of research and so where, where did you go to for all this research and what did you do to know more about ballet as well? Actually, uh, we know that uh, she has a passion in ballet and she's been doing and uh, the teachers they gave a very positive comments on her saying that she has inborn talent mm. and then she has skills you have to encourage her like that so we said okay like we've been doing that but nothing more than that mm. but uh, after her metric exam uh, one of her teacher she called me up and then she said hey what are you doing now? Mm. Uh, she's so talented she's so good so in India, from India only, she called me up mm -hmm. and then she said uh, she has not much place to do ballet in India, so why don't you send her for full-time ballet? Then we don't know what full-time ballet. Mm -hmm. And then I started inquiring about her getting some help and then through social media I start searching. So it's a really time taking and it's a, it has a lot of in, investment. Yeah, right. and sacrifices, and also uh, unforeseen challenges. Nah? Right. So, uh, we all did, my husband, my son, my daughter, but especially I did a lot of research. Mm -hmm. So, this is how uh, that really helped us to go uh, this far and to help her to fulfill her dreams. Yeah. Right. Uh, also, as, as you have mentioned, I would also want to know, Sinabir, do you actually practice your dance or where do you, I mean, is there a studio here in Dimapur, et cetera, or where do you practice usually? Uh, I usually practice at home in my living room. No, so ma'am, uh, I'm pretty sure that you guys had to met, make some arrangements for um, her practice also. So tell me yes. more about that also, the arrangements that you had to make. Ballet is not just like you get an open space and you start dancing there because with flat shoes, with soft shoes, she can practice anywhere. But with point shoes, it's very dangerous also to practice on the floor, especially on the tiles floor like that. So we have not made a very special arrangement, but we did some arrangement for her to practice because she need to practice constantly every day yeah how many hours uh, practice in a day um i usually spend a minimum of five to seven hours practicing really. so <laughs> you watch youtube videos and practice or how does a practice session go uh yes i usually watch youtube videos or um free classes available in uh, websites I practice from there. And also, um, ma'am, since we were in uh, touch for a while before this interview, so uh, you mentioned about her participating in a competition. Was it last year or this year in Mumbai that uh, the semi semi-finals one? You did mention. So tell me, uh, tell us more about the competition that she has been participating in. Yeah, this is a, a great Indian ballet competition. It's a premier the only premier competition in India for ballet. So I think she, she yeah, she has uh, participated in 2019 and then she won the championship in uh, junior category. Nah? Yeah. yeah, youth, yeah, yeah, youth category. And 2020, again, there was a virtual competition because of the pandemic. So she got second runners-up. So this year also, uh, she has gone for semi-final. She was selected. She is uh, now in finalist. So we'll be going down to Mumbai again. On the 11th, there is a final. Yeah. And also, as much as I'm aware of, uh, you guys were in Singapore for a while and came back only some weeks ago, I think. Tell me more about that also. What, uh, what what was the uh, actual motive of going to uh, Singapore also? Yeah, since she'll be going for full-time ballet, and then she has done ballet, basic ballet in Dimapur, 
but and uh, occasionally during her holidays, like winters holiday, summer holiday, I used to take her down to Mumbai for uh, special private uh, classes. classes. Yeah, yeah. So that was intensive because we have no time, so we do that. But that is not enough for her, so um, we decided to go to Singapore for uh, uh, elite Vaganova classes yeah. Yeah? and then also a private class mm -hmm. uh, which is which was very intensive but she really needed to go through all this so we then came back mm. and I think it really helps her even to this competition also yeah so um do you like to take, uh, you said you want to take ballet as a profession, right? So before you realized, uh, you said that you realized that you wanted to take ballet as a profession since I think you were 11. Before that, what did you actually want it to be when you grow up? What was your profession before ballet? What was your uh, first option, aim in life? Uh, I was actually um, a doctor. <laughs> right. Yeah. So are you also good in studies? Uh, I think it would be better for the mom to answer that since she wouldn't be able to answer that. <laughs> yeah, she's good at studies. Right. She's uh, hardworking also and then sincere. Yeah, she's good at studies. Mm. So, Sina, what are, what are your future? I'd also want to know what are your future plans since after the competition uh, uh, I also heard that you have a scholarship or something for Australia. So tell us more about that as well. Uh, yes, so um, I'll be going to Australia uh, for full-time ballet. Uh, it's in Melbourne. The academy is uh, the National Theatre Academy. Um, well, hopefully after completing uh, my um, ballet schooling there in Australia, uh, I'll be able to become a professional dancer. Uh, but uh, my ultimate goal is to come back to India and help the ballet community, uh, especially in Ireland, to introduce professional training. Right. So ma'am, what do you uh, think about that? How I also want, I'm a little surprised because, uh, and also, um, Happy that happy to see that you know in Nagaland our parents are mostly in we are, we live in such a generation where our parents are more into uh, you know get a job or be a doctor get a government job and the family your family is supporting full time supporting her to uh, take ballet as a profession so tell us more about that I'm a little surprised and also very uh, happy to know about it so tell me more about it. Yeah, as I said earlier, it was a child's dream. We didn't take it seriously, but uh, after uh, the teacher used to tell us that you have to encourage her, so we also did encourage her and not more than that, but uh, the turning point was uh, this year after the, uh, the teacher called me up and then said, why don't you do this? Why don't you help her out and all these things? Then I also find because uh, since uh, her childhood, that is from five years, I've been following her throughout the class, at home and everything. And I, be, uh, to be honest, I would not tell that uh, send your daughter, your children for ballet class or something like that. But uh, if they're really uh, serious and have patience, eh? and also not only serious, not only patient, but talented. Eh? And then if you find that they are inborn and if they're serious about it, eh? I think we should encourage our children eh? per to pursue the the goal. So we have decided to encourage her. Yeah. Also, Sundar, like you can see, your parents are very supportive of your passion. So how do you feel about that? And what would you also want to say to them also now? Oh, well, um, 
I'm very fortunate and lucky to have uh, such supportive parents. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank them for supporting me. Right. Also, ma'am, I also want to know, since you mentioned uh, that, uh, since we were talking about her scholarship in Australia, how did she uh, get that? Actually, it's not a scholarship. Okay. This is a full-time and then we'll be going uh, for... It's very expensive, right. as you know, ballet is. I start from the tutu and then the leotard and the shoes, which is not av even available in India. We have to order from outside. And as she grows up, you know, she wants to have the best shoes, mm. which are very comfortable like that. So it's very expensive. And also the studies, you know, it's very expensive. So we are doing by ourselves. Mm. No, there's no scholarship. But hopefully, as she go and join, uh, there is a chance for her scholarship also. Right. She can apply scholarship. And all these ballets, you know, uh, even to the admission, it's through audition. Mm. And then the scholarship also through audition. She got some scholarship before earlier in her competitions now. Nah? to London, to Serbia. Uh, Serbia, and this time also they have to USA. And, and they're offering scholarships to USA, USA New, New York, no? New Zealand. New Zealand, yeah. So maybe she got one of those also. So why Australia then? Australia is not for scholarship, but for mm. full-time studies. Okay, okay. Yeah. So is it the only place that's, uh, that has full-time studies or I mean, why choose only Australia no. then? There are many places, yeah. but in uh, Europe, mm. uh, their session starts sometime in January, February, March, like that. Right. So, but Australia, when she finish her class 10, she can apply. Mm. So till November, audition it's open, dates? audition open. Yeah. Okay. So because of the timing, yeah. So when she leaves to Australia, she'll be living alone, right? So uh, uh, how do you feel about that as a mother to send your daughter away uh, at such, I mean, I wouldn't say it's such an early age, but usually when we go out to study, it's uh, mostly uh, after you pass your 12, and that's when you are more mature or when you can go out and be independent instead. So how do you feel about that? Do you feel... Uh, I mean, of course, you'll be feeling sad about it a little bit also, but are you excited about it? Just uh, tell me the whole feeling. Uh, actually, she's very soft and very quiet, and I'm very strong. Yeah. <laughs> so I always tell her to just be like me, and I encourage her like that. And uh, she'll be all right because she really uh, give her full uh, person na, to okay. the what, whatever she's doing. So I know very well that she'll be doing justice to her work. She'll be very busy because belly, you know, the moment you s get up, you have to do some exercise, then she'll be stretching, then she'll be going to class, she'll be coming back. Again, she has to do the, some stretching like that. So, I think there's not much time to miss home also, mm. and then, so I'm happy for that uh, she is the kind of a person she was, she is, na? she is getting that thing that she is supposed to do, like. Now that, her. as you mentioned, you have been following her since she was five, that I, you already know the whole, uh, her routine, what what she does and what she does not. So, also, uh, have you also learned some ballet moves? Then, <laughs> have you ever tried, or have you ever made your mother try I doing ballet? I will, I, will, <laughs> I will not try, but I know the terms now. <laughs> yeah. So there'll be like postures and uh, what do you call that? Uh, not I wouldn't call that moves. Yeah, positions also. So. Now I'm pretty sure you learned more about it than her also since you, I think sh you'll be doing more research for her <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. Also, Sinab, um, how do you feel about leaving uh, for your further uh, studies? Are you excited? Um, yes, I'm excited. Uh, it will be challenging, but... Um, You're prepared for it. Yeah, I'm prepared for it. Um, moreover, I can 
since we're having this conversation, uh, like we're having this conversation, I kind of noticed that you're also very little shy and very, you know, fragile. So is it the same? Uh, what are the changes that you see in her also when she performs? Is she the same person or it's just a totally different person when she performs? She's totally different person. That's why I'm happy because mm. I know she can, <laughs> she, she can, can go it. forward. Yeah. So, Sindhu, tell me more about, uh, you know, you think the changes that came about in yourself also after you started learning ballet. Do you uh, use it as a form of expression or uh, how do you use it? Do you feel confident when you're doing it or what does it make you feel like when you do um, ballet? Yeah, it makes me feel confident when I dance. Uh, it gives me a great sense of joy, especially when I dance. Right. Do you ever feel nervous when you start or is it just like a normal thing for you? Just go and, I mean, were you born a performer? <laughs> what do you say? I don't know, but um, before I enter the stage, obviously it's um, very nerve-wracking. I get really nervous, but uh, once I step on the stage, uh, I feel very free. Right. Since we're far along in this conversation also, but I want to know more about ballet also since, and also I think our viewers might want to know about uh, ballet. So just tell us some basics about ballet, like if you can, how yeah. to start. Just uh, Ballet is a classical dance form. It uh, originally originated from Italy, then uh, to France and R Russia. Right. So tell us more about uh, the, like you said, uh, when you're practicing, or would you, what, what is the most difficult thing about ballet? Um, the most difficult thing about ballet is um, you have to be mentally very strong. Mm. Uh, like you have to push yourself and be willing to work hard. I'm pretty sure there must be, uh, like I said, uh, p positions and all that uh, you're, you're trying to learn also. So tell us uh, something about the most uh, difficult thing that you're trying to learn. I mean, easy uh, like learn can really difficult. So what is something that you want to learn, but just something like that? Um, Belly's um, step mm. position I would want to learn is fortis. Right. Uh, you turn with uh, one single leg up and down uh, continuously. Usually, uh, dancers in performances, they do 32 turns in one go, right. which is um, very difficult, so yeah. that's something I would want to do. Did you ever get hurt? Because uh, like you've said, when you do ballet, you have to point your toe, and I don't know what to call that, but did, did you ever get hurt doing that? Uh, were there any injuries when you were practicing? Um, like not big injuries, but um, I usually get um, blisters in my toes because of dancing one point shoes and um, muscle aches. Right. So the ma'am, I would want to know um, the clothes and everything, where do you get it from? Since we know that, I don't think we'll get it in Nagaland if I'm... So where do you I usually get all the clothes? And I, had to, I used to sourcing everywhere. <laughs> the mm. first time when she participated in uh, 2029, 19. Right. Yeah, so... I got her crown from China and her for her blisters and um, the second skin they call na, for to put on the toes. I got it from USA. There are several places mm. and sometimes uh, last year I think I ordered some uh, uh, leotard from um, Egypt, Israel, na? yeah, Israel, like that. And mostly we get from Singapore. I would also want to know about uh, how her father feels about this also. Is he also uh, as excited and as uh, involved as you are when it comes to her following her profession? Yeah, equally. My son, my husband and we all are equally supportive and then also involving, yeah. Okay. I remember in one competition, mm. my son has to carry the tutu. Na? Mm -mm. It's, a, it's a big tussle and he has to carry all around. <laughs> yes. so it's the whole family, you have yes, to support yes, from your whole yes, family, yes. right? Like it, um, 
uh, now coming to the end parts of this conversation, I'm pretty sure there were also uh, difficulties you have faced, not just as a family, but also her as um, f following her dreams, not just al uh, that alone, but also other facilities, I mean, difficulties as well. So I'd want to know more about that. What are the difficult, some of the difficulties that you have faced or she has faced? The most important thing is like, we have no proper guidance, na, whom to ask, where to go. Right. And then a ballet dance is very sensitive, like they cannot just dance everywhere. So we need a proper studio to practice also. That also we don't have. And from our side, uh, it's very expensive. Right. So, um, and then uh, since she's under 18, um, there is a lot of sacrifice, especially from my side, I have to, mm. yeah. So then the investments, and there are so many other challenges also. So tell us more about the infrastructure here as well in Nagaland when it comes to ballet or the facilities available, like teachers and all, so the difficulties that you have faced. Uh, tell us more about that as well. Actually, Sanabla, uh, Sanab Sangla, she, one of the things that she started doing is like, she was saying, when I grow, when she was very small that time, mm -hmm. and she said, when I grow up, I'll teach ballet. That time we have no idea about ballet, full time ballet, and all mm. this thing. But she said, I'll teach ballet because I don't want my student to suffer. I don't want other girls to suffer if they have dream to become a ballerina or something like that. Then they should get proper uh, training and then all the facilities mm. like that. She's been talking about when she was very young. Mm. So I think I think she will. <laughs> come back and do that for our society, for our children, right. yeah. Sinop, so tell me more about it, you'll know more about the difficulties that you have faced. So tell us more about, uh, I mean, tell us more about it. Um, like my mother has just mentioned, uh, no proper guidance, which is uh, very difficult for us, and uh, no proper uh, schooling or um, professional teachers, and uh, it was difficult to get um, ballet ex accessories right. and um, like the leotards and uniforms. We had to um, order it all from outside of India. So, right. so uh, one another thing is like, if you're not very careful, nah, you are very prone to injuries. Mm. And if there is proper guidance and professional teacher, nah, that can be avoided. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sinop, so tell me, uh, has not, you know, not having proper guidance or not having proper facilities, has, uh, did it ever discourage you? Mm, yeah, because uh, uh, students abroad, um, their level of dancing is like really high compared to um, my level of dancing, right. people of my age. So I thought of giving up once, but but did you gain yeah. that confidence again after you won? Uh, Mama, you mentioned it was 2017, uh, what, 2019. So after, when you you practicing here alone at your home, and I'm pretty sure those people were would have like gotten uh, professional uh, guidance also, those who you uh, competed with. So after winning that, did that give you a confidence that, okay, I can actually do it? What about that experience also, her winning that, uh, the ballet competition in 2019, as you mentioned. That experience was, uh, I should say, it's a very funny experience because the first time we have experience, we don't know what to do. And then literally I was behind the screen mm. because she needs something and we have no aid. Like uh, people are accompanied with teachers or assistant teachers like that. Mm. and then. I was all alone, so I have to bring whatever she needs behind the screen. She was performing, I was behind the screen. <laughs> Did you, uh, how was your experience It was a then, very yeah. nice experience, yeah. 
And also tell me about your experience. Uh, how was it? Were you scared? Did you did you ever think that you could win that, or you just went there to just try out and you know let's see how it goes outside? Uh, was it just for that experience? Did you ever think that you could win that? Well, uh, it was my first ever competition, uh, ballet competition, so um, I was very nervous because I didn't know what to expect, and I wasn't expecting to win at all. Right. I thought I just participate and just, uh, just to experience. But, um, yeah, luckily I won. I wouldn't say luckily. I would say that <laughs> you put a lot of efforts to it. So uh, I would, I think we would say it's a skill or a talent. I think would say, and uh, considering the fact that you did not, uh, you do not get proper guidance, but you still could go and win. I think that would be national level, right? Yes. National level competitions, ballet competitions, and such. That would, that's I think uh, it's commendable and. Kudos to you, like Thank seriously. You. Your ma'am, uh, first I would say, uh, would come to you. Um, I could, I could see that your family is very much uh, involved in making her achieve her dreams and also sacrificing a lot. Uh, what would be your message to the other uh, parents also? You know about uh, supporting one's uh, child to achieve their dream. I mean, just. Generally, what is your message to all the parents out there? Parents? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My message to the parents is we have to identify our children. Our children are very talented. So we should identify the talent, the strength, and encourage them to achieve their desire, goal, like, yeah. Whatever their uh, yeah, dream Yeah, good be, at, right? yes. Right. Also, Sana, lastly, uh, since it's all about you, what is your, um, you know, advice or what do you, what is your message to the, your fellow friends or you know, who wants to follow, uh, take up ballet as a profession, or who are interested in learning about ballet? What what are what would you want to say to them? Um, my message to my fellow friends who would want to follow my path would be: uh, choose your path wisely, and uh, if you're truly passionate about it, uh, take the risk and keep going. It's possible. And I think after watching this uh, interview. Um, a lot of maybe we might find kids who would want to not kids also even adults if any who would want to know more about ballet and who would want to start learning ballet themselves also so uh, would you like to give them some tips as well like where to go and uh, you know some pages or anything as such or uh, places you can go to learn like anything as such uh, well uh, if your kid is interested in ballet and uh, you should uh, firstly find a, a good teacher. Yeah, a proper yeah, good teacher. Not true online. Yeah, a, a good teacher. Then, if they are serious about it, uh, you should send them abroad. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think that's all we'll have for this conversation. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, it was a pleasure having both of you. And uh, I think, you know, for mom, I think, I mean, I just want to say that. Uh, She's really lucky to have uh, parents like you guys who are who are so much involved in uh, making her achieve her dreams and supporting her throughout uh, throughout her journey. So, um, just you know, I just want to say thank you for Marcelo. I don't know. I mean, it's such a nice thing to see, and I would also want to. Uh, I would also. I also believe that you would continue doing that in the future. So thank you so much. You go achieve your dreams, and we believe that you'll come back and uh, fulfill the also the dreams of other kids here, like you've mentioned. Like it's your dream. So thank you so much for uh, joining us today. It was a pleasure having you both. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think that's all we'll have for now. I'm Matu Jemir signing out for Hornbill TV.